Hi, this video will show you some technique for doing problems like that shown to the right. These are problems where you're printing things, and so, and so the printing requires that you go from row to row, and within each row, from left to right. So these are techniques for doing loop within a loop problems where you're printing. Now, the three steps that are involved here are first, to get the number of rows right. So here to get six rows, three, four, and then, and at that point, ignoring the columns, ignoring what gets printed. Once you've got that working, then and only then, you get the number of items in each row right, still ignoring what you're actually printing. Finally, you get the thing, to the uh, each row to print the right things, and then you're done. This is an example of a critical principle that shows up all over the place in software engineering. The principle is to separate concerns. That is, divide the problem into separate pieces that can be solved, implemented, and tested independently of each other. Without that, software engineering would be much harder. All right, so here's our example off to the right. Let's just check that that's a legitimate example. So we first ask, is this problem looping through rows top to bottom? Yes, yes it is. And then we ask, is this problem looping through columns left to right? And yes, it is. So this is an example of the kind of problem that we're going to do. Later, we'll see more complicated problems that combine things like these. So again, we are three steps. Let's start with step one, where we try to get the number of rows right. So we ask ourselves, how many rows? Well, finally, we look at the problem. We see when r is 6, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 problems, uh, rows. When r is 3, 1, 2, 3 rows. When r is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 rows. Looks like we have r rows. So our code is, as here, we have a loop that goes r times. Right now, we'll just print an asterisk. And when we test, we see asterisk, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yep, right number of rows. 1, 2, 3, yep, right number of rows. 4, yep, right number of rows. We would keep doing this test until our code does yield the right number of rows. Then, and only then, do we go on to the next step. Now, step two is to get the number of items in each row right. So our goal here is, well, first of all, we know we have a loop, and then within it, a loop. We know that in that interior loop, we're going to print them all in the same line. That's that end equal quote quote. In other words, suppress the new line, the line break that would normally be with a print. And at the end of the interior loop, when you're finished with a row, do a print to get to the next row, to do the, the line break to the next row. And all we're trying to figure out at this step is what goes there in that question mark. How many columns are there going to be? How many items in this row are there going to be? So we ask ourselves, how many items in each row? And does that depend on which row? And if so, is it an increasing or decreasing function of the row number? Well, let's look here. For uh, r equals 6, one of our cases, we see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 items in that row, 6 in the next row, 5 in the next row, and so forth. When r is 3, we have 4, then 3, then 2. Looks like the number of items does depend on the row, and as the row increases, the number of items decreases. That tells us that our range statement will have a minus k in it. So our code is going to look something like this down here. We're going to have our r uh, rows, and the number of columns will decrease as the row number increases. We've got to add in some constant there, because we don't want negative number of columns. So we just look and see, well, when r is 6, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, rows there. When r is 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 columns, I should have said, 4 columns there. When r is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, there at the, when, at the beginning. So it looks like when k is 0, the first row, we have one more than r columns. When k is 0, we have, when r is 6, 7. When k is 0, the first row, when r is 3, 4 columns. 
when k is 0, when r is 4, 5 columns. So it looks like the right expression here is an r plus 1, where that question mark is. We go in range minus k plus r plus 1. We run our test, and here's what we get. We're still printing asterisks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, yeah, 6 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Yep, 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 yep. Doing great. So we get this straight so that we have the right number of rows and the right number of items per row, the right number of columns in this case, for each of our test cases. Then, and only then, do we go on to the third and final step. The third step is to get the things to be printed, the right things to be printed. Now where we are is we've got our rows, and we determined previously the number of columns is this expression, and all we're trying to figure out is what to print. Well, we look at our code there and we ask, does that which to to, word to print depend on the row? And then we ask, does it depend on the column? And in either case, if it does depend, we ask, is it an increasing or decreasing function of that variable? So here's the row, which remember is our k variable. k is 0, we got 8. k is uh, 1, we got 7. As k increases, our number decreases. So we're going to have a minus k that we're going to be printing as part of our expression. Then we look across a row. We see that as j increases, our number decreases. Our number decreases. So we're going to have a minus j in our expression. So what we've got here then is minus k minus j. And again, we have some constant because we don't want negative things to be printed. So we just look. When k is 0 and j is 0, let's see. In this case, it's r, which is 6, plus 2. k is 0, j is 0, r plus 2. Hey, k is 0, r is 0. R, uh, k is 0, j is 0, r plus 2. So it looks like what we have is an r plus 2 there. We run our test, we find we got the right result, the code here with r plus 2 in for that question mark. So to summarize, we have three steps for doing these kinds of problems where you're printing on the console using a loop within a loop. Step one is you get the number of rows right, then and only then do you try to get the number of items in each row right, and then and only then you try to print the right things. Prior to that, you just print asterisks or whatever is convenient. This is a classic example of the critical software engineering principle. Whenever possible, separate concerns. Divide the problem into pieces that can be solved, implemented, and perhaps most importantly, tested independently of each other. If you apply this uh, technique to your uh, printing uh, problems that are loops within loops, I think you'll find that the problems are much easier. In any case, you'll be using a principle that will do you well in all your work.